Hi everyone, it's Chelsea from Little Mountain Ranch. I just wanted to say something before I get into this video. I love making content for you guys so much and I'm really enjoying the fact that I'm able to make more for you. And I have been wanting the last couple of days to make videos for you, but as you can see, it's currently raining and it has been raining for days and days and days. And I just decided what the heck, I'm gonna bring the camera out to the garden and do some harvesting because I need to harvest. And the fact that it's just gonna continue raining now for the next seven days, there is no window of opportunity for harvesting without the rain. And I also really wanted to make another video for you. So I decided we'll just go for it. We're out in the forest garden right now and it's starting to bloom. I just love this time of year. Every time I come out here, it feels like a treasure hunt. There's always a new flower blooming. Actually, I just wanted to quickly share with you guys this app that I use on my phone. This isn't sponsored or anything. This is just an app that I really like. And it is called Picture This. And I'm gonna show you how it works. I don't have a paid service. I'm just using the free account, but can you see that screen there, hopefully? <laughs> so I just click on this, and then I will go take a picture of any one of these flowers. So let's take a picture of this one here, how about? And then it will identify it as long as I have enough service where I am. And it I, has identified it really quickly, and it says it's Lewis flax, a species of the flax or blue flax. And I love this so much. It's so much fun to be able to identify all of the plants that are in this forest garden. But I even went out to the hayfield the other day, and it was able to identify most of the grasses that I have in my hayfield which is just so much fun. So I will drop a link to this app down in the description box below if you wanna go check it out. The one caution with any plant identifying apps is obviously to just use common sense. Don't be eating anything that the plant identifier app says is okay to eat without doing a lot of um, extra research and stuff into it. And I think that probably goes without saying, but I need to say things like that. Today, the plan for today is to harvest all of the buttoning broccoli. So that's those little tiny heads I was sharing with you in the last video. If you missed that video, I'll link it up here and down below if you wanna go check it out. It's just where I was sharing some of the challenges that I was having in my garden, particularly with my broccoli and cauliflower. I have some other issues starting to happen with my cauliflower, so I really need to get all of that harvested. And since the rain is just not gonna stop, I'm gonna have to do it in the rain and that's just the way it is. I actually don't mind working in the rain. I find it kind of calming as long as it's not like a deluge. We have had some crazy storms, storms like unlike anything I've ever seen in this area. We had some hail the other day that ended up blasting some holes in some of the plants. But thankfully, most of the plants are big enough. They were able to withstand a little bit of damage like that. So I will give you a little pan over of the forest garden and show you all of the flowers that are growing in here when we are finished doing the harvesting. But for now, in case it does start raining really hard, let's get these broccoli and cauliflower picked. So you can see here how I've broken over these leaves and that is to help keep the rain off of the cauliflower because I don't know if you can see that down there but there's starting to be some browning happening. These leaves back um, in here and that's caused by water damage. So you can do this or you can actually just tie the leaves up with some string but I find this is more efficient and I never have string with me when I'm in the garden. And can you see down in here this purpling? That can also be caused by water or even sun. One of the things about um, cauliflower is if it gets direct sunlight on it, it will impact the color of your broccoli, either purple it or yellow it. So covering up like this is actually called blanching. There are some varieties of self blanching um, cauliflower, which is super handy, but that is not these. So I am just covering them up. This is a good example of one that really needs to be picked right now. Can you see how it is starting to separate in here? If I were to leave this, it would just start rotting. So thankfully that's a nice size head though. I think what we'll do here is we'll start with the cauliflower and I'll show you my technique. It's a pretty high tech technique. <laughs> okay, so I take the leaves like this and push them down, break them off this way. And sometimes I will just leave the leaves in the garden like this to both act as a mulch to keep the weeds from coming up and also just to biodegrade and then get back in and feed the soil. But I am going to bring some of these over to the pigs because the pigs also love them. You can eat these as well, but I have so many greens in my garden 
that I won't be harvesting these for that purpose. So I just go like this and then I take a knife and just cut it off and break off anything extra. As you can see, that's a pretty head of cauliflower, but it's not very big. This is a great example of the purpling that I was talking about. I'm really happy with the size of these heads. I was not expecting to get heads this large. This is about half the size of what I'm used to getting, but this is so much better than teeny tiny like this. The one thing that is different about cauliflower and broccoli is that with broccoli, generally when you take the main head, side shoots will grow off, and I'll show you that in a second. And with cauliflower, once you remove the main head, the plant is done. So you really wanna to try to get as nice of a big head as you possibly can. And this is a good example of the water damage that I was showing you. You see the browning that's in there? So if I didn't pull this off, this would be rotten within probably a couple days. And the other thing that I've noticed on here, although I have squished most of them, see this little green thing that's right here? That's a cabbage moth egg and those are not good. <laughs> I don't seem to have a huge bug pressure going on so I'm able to go along and mush everything that I need to mush so that they're not propagating themselves all over my brassica patch. Generally, I will always have a few cabbage moths flitting around and I'll end up with a few worms, but for the most part, it's never anything that I can't manage just by picking stuff off. Um, but hey, there's a first time for everything. <laughs> Gardening, like I said in my last video, just changes year by year. And I am noticing more egg action happening than I'm used to, but it's still, um, I'm still able to just squash them. So now on to my itty bitty broccoli heads. Look at how tiny that is. And you might think that I could leave this and it would grow larger, except I can tell that I cannot because you see how loose this is? This is just about to bolt and flower. So I need to pop this off. And with these ones, I just break them off. One of the nice things about broccoli is that, like I mentioned earlier, it will send off these little tiny side shoots and these will develop into little heads about this size. And so I will be able to get a second harvest off these. So that's good. This one is a little bit bigger, but look at how loose that is. I'm really glad I'm getting in here to get these off now. This one is a little bit bigger. It's such a shame because these plants are so beautiful and healthy looking. But the good news is, is there's actually um, fewer of them with little button heads like this than I thought. And at least half of them are still um, looking like they might form normal size heads. That would be amazing. We are about two weeks ahead of what I was last year, which just doesn't really make sense to me because we've had no warm weather to speak of. <laughs> but I checked my dates from last year and I didn't do my large harvest for about two weeks from now. So maybe two weeks from now I will get a larger harvest. So that's really exciting and super encouraging. <laughs> One of the things I'm going to be able to get an awesome harvest from today is this gorgeous kale. Oh my goodness. This is that abundance kale that I sing the praises of all the time. And I know many of you have tried to find these seeds and haven't been able to. There's only one place that I know where you can get these seeds or you were able to get these seeds a couple of years ago and that's West Coast Seeds out of Vancouver. Um, but they didn't have them this year. So I have reached out to them to see if they are planning on carrying these seeds again so that I can pass that information on to you and let you know when they are back in stock but I am going to be letting these go to seed um, in hopes that I can start getting my own seed and then I can offer that to you guys. Kale is a biennial, which means I do have to wait till next spring before these are gonna go to seed, but I have a few seeds left, so at least I can plant another, another batch of this next spring. But I am working on getting these seeds to you somehow, in some way, it's my goal. But anyway, I'm gonna do a big harvest on these and my plan is to blanch and freeze these. Um, these are a really, really super tender leaf. You can see how soft that is. 
So they only have to be blanched for about a minute to two minutes. And blanching just means to bring a pot of water to a boil, cut these into the size that you want, remove the rib. I always think it's a good idea to remove the rib because it doesn't taste that great and um, drop them in the water, boil them for a minute to two minutes, sometimes three minutes, depending on how thick the leaf is and um, then dunk them straight into cold water. Ice water is even better. Lay them out on a cookie tray, put them in the freezer, let them freeze, and then put them into Ziploc bags. That is what I am planning on doing with a whole bunch of this gorgeous kale. I do have some other varieties of kale as well, but I think I'm gonna stick to the abundance kale for today. And I'll work on the other kales a little bit later. So the name abundance with this kale is very appropriate because it grows and grows and grows like this and it grows up to five feet tall, which is amazing. It may just be the year of the kale for me, I don't know. As promised, we will take a little tour through the forest garden and I'll show you some of the things that are growing. One of the first things that's great is I actually cut down my comfrey and laid it down around the tree like I'm supposed to. I didn't do that last year. And I almost didn't do it this year just because I love the way the comfrey looks so much. It's beautiful and the bees love the flowers. But the whole purpose of planting comfrey around fruit trees is to feed them, lop them down and let that decaying matter actually feed the plant. <laughs> so I'm trying to actually run this like a food forest the way that you're supposed to. So I actually did lop them down. I had so much material, I was able to move it around some of the other trees whose comfrey are just little this year. So I'm feeling good about that. And with some of those leaves, I also made a comfrey fertilizer. And man, I have to tell you, it smells so bad. I don't even know if the smell is worth it, even if it works well. Look at how completely disgusting that looks. I just have this in here. This just kind of weighs down all the plant matter in there, but it smells like a dirty diaper. Like it is nasty. Anyway, the way that you do that is you soak the leaves for four to six weeks and then you cut it. I think it's about one to one with water. I'll have to look that up again before I use it. I made it so that I could fertilize all my potted plants up at the house. I was actually thinking I've never given you a tour of around the house before, or maybe I did years ago, but that's something that I will probably do later on this week. That is why I made that but I'm just hopeful that once I water it down and then actually feed it to the plants that the odor just doesn't sort of waft off of the potted plants because that would make it a no-go for me. So let's take a little tour around. I wanna show you some of the beautiful plants that are growing in here and talk to you a little bit about what I'm planning on doing with them. Is this not the most beautiful California poppy you've ever seen? Like that is just beautiful. I didn't get ones this color um, last year. Most of the ones I planted last year are just orange like this. These are beautiful too. But this practically glows. It looks like sunshine. I've been spending a lot of time lately learning about medicinal plants and how to make things like tinctures. So my plan with these poppies, I'm not gonna pick one of those right now because I don't need it, but um, is I'm going to make a tincture out of them. And like I mentioned before, I'm not gonna share a lot about how to do these things until I am more experienced with them, but I will drop a link down below of someone who I know does an amazing job at sharing this kind of information. Her name's April and her channel and her Instagram are called She's of the Woods and she's phenomenal. I'm planning on making a tincture with these because apparently the California poppy has properties which really help with restlessness and anxiety and things like that. So that is my plan with those, if I can bring myself to cut them. I have a huge patch of them that came back. They obviously like this location from last year. And then the beautiful borage. There is not enough good things you can say about the borage. Look at that beautiful star flower. These are fully edible and you can use them to decorate things. This is really fun for kids, but to decorate cakes and cupcakes and stuff with these. Do you remember how much I took off of this wild bergamot? Look at how much has grown since then. So that was just two weeks ago and it looks pretty much like it did before I harvested it. That's what I love about herbs is they're just prolific. And the echinacea too. Really excited about this. My little beans are starting to climb up the poles. Beans do not like cold weather, so they have been struggling a little bit. These strawberries are starting to do their thing. Look at that beautiful strawberry. We've pulled probably about 30 strawberries like this out of here in the last day. 
I don't even mind a little bit of dirt. Mm. So good. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? This is a wild geranium and you have to be very careful with these because they are really invasive. So just stay on top of them if they start spreading around. The bees absolutely love them, which is why I put them in my forest garden. This is a second year current and it didn't flower this year, but I expect it will next year. It has sent out a ton of new growth. And this native gooseberry is just going gangbusters. I can't believe how much this has grown since I planted it here in the spring. So the little tag on here, I can probably take that off. The queen of the garden, the peony. Is that not the most beautiful thing in the world? These um, are edible. The flowers are edible. I've made syrup with these before. I wasn't a huge fan of the syrup. It was okay, but it was so mild and the amount of petals that you needed to make it didn't really make it worthwhile in my opinion, but it is something that you can do. I'm happy just to leave them here to enjoy the beauty of them. Here is a view of the forest garden I don't think I've given you before. So these rows, there's three of them, one, two, and then three, and they are about 30 feet long a piece and maybe about 12 feet wide or so. And I have apple trees, cherry trees, plum trees, elderberry, seaberry, red currant, gooseberry, strawberry. Hmm, what else do I have in there? Lots of medicinal flowers that you can all see in here. This is actually only two years old. This is its second summer and I can't wait to see what this is going to look like in three or four years. I did plant just the other day a couple more fruit trees so I'm going to kind of pull the forest garden from here to go in around this way as well. This one here is a September ruby and another September ruby down over here and then I cannot remember what this little one was. Let's go see. This one is a I guess malice Domestica Wealthy Apple. Well, whoever named that apple was not very creative, but I am going to be straightening this one out and staking it to this tea post I put in. I just haven't gotten around to that yet. And the same with this one. When you are planting fruit trees, it's a really good idea to stake them for the first year because the root system isn't established. So if you get a strong wind, it could blow the tree right over. Okay, I'm gonna get inside and get all of this produce put up in the freezer. I'll be freezing the broccoli and the cauliflower and the kale. So the same thing that I mentioned with the blanching for the kale, I'll do the same thing with the broccoli and cauliflower as well, except instead of a minute or so, I will do the full three minutes. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you here as part of this community. You guys are honestly the best. I get so inspired and encouraged and learn so much from you in the comment section and I really do try to respond to each and every one of you. I hope that you all have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon. Bye!